This week on CQA Weekly, I talk about PCI Express lanes, your processor, how it affects your computer's actual graphics cards, and all the auxiliary cards that you add in. My name is Steve Smith. This is TQA Weekly. If ever you have any questions, comments, suggestions for other shows, you can always email me at ask.tqaweekly.com. Go to my website, tqaweekly.com, and use the contact form to email me directly or interact with the community with previous episodes I've already done. And of course, you can always find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And if you're already watching on YouTube, Vimeo, or blip.tv, you can always post down below. This episode of TQA Weekly is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and without oversight. For 20% off your brand new account, go to, go, go to proxpn.com slash podcast and use the coupon code TQAWEE. Now, today's topic is all about PCI Express lanes, which are basically determined by your CPU, but for those who don't know what PCI Express lanes are, it's networking. Your motherboard is a miniaturized network of all the components communicating to each other and their bandwidth is determined by the CPU every time you powered it on. So any other add-on cards, including your graphics cards, will affect the amount of PCI Express lanes available to other cards because your CPU probably only has a specific set amount of PCI Express lanes. So if we take the i7-4790K, it has a maximum of 16 PCI Express lanes. If you take the 5960X from Intel, it's got 40 PCI Express lanes. So knowing how many PCI Express lanes does count, and usually this has to do with the architecture and what you intend to do with it. So for your most common user using the H97 or Z97 boards or the equivalents inside of AMD, you will be probably using only one graphics card, maybe two, probably a sound card if you really, 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 really want to because there's already a dedicated one inside of all motherboards and maybe a few other cards, which I highly doubt it since most features are now built into the graphics into the motherboard as well. So that usually means that you should be able to do just about anything within a 16 PCI Express architecture like the 1150 architecture of Intel. So basically it only has 16, but you don't care because you're playing video games or doing some stuff on the internet and you got all the power you need and all the connectivity that you actually need. Now, if you're a videographer or doing some GPU computational stuff or anything that's really heavy and you need more graphics cards or you need more add-on cards, you will benefit from the X99 type platforms because they have more PCI Express lanes. More lanes means more bandwidth, which means you can do more stuff and you can actually connect more stuff. So if you're going to connect up to four graphics cards inside and you have the 5960X and you're using 40 PCI Express lanes inside of there, you'll be able to benefit from one graphics card being at 16x and three graphics cards being at 8x, not worrying at all about bottlenecking since PCI Express Gen 2 is in fact faster than what the graphics cards are capable of running and you're already capable of running a lot higher at 8x on a PCI Express Gen 3 motherboard. So there is no worries about the graphics cards actually running low on bandwidth. You'll be able to do everything you want. Now the question is, why would I care? And what happens if you connect too much stuff on there? Well, features actually stop working on motherboard. They're not broken. They just turn off. All manuals that actually are worth a damn actually indicate this kind of possibility in them if you connect too many devices together. All you need to do is to remove the gadgets you're not using and you'll get all of your bandwidth back. It won't break your computer. They just won't work, period. That's it. So. If you really need to have a lot of connectivity, go with processors and boards that allow for more bandwidth through a higher amount of PCI Express lanes. Otherwise, stick to one or two cards on your motherboard and don't overdo it and you can stay on the smaller, less expensive H97, Z97, and even AMD platform, which will allow you to benefit with the way that you intend gaming and Facebook and Twitter and watching YouTube shows like you're doing right now.
Now this episode is brought to you by ProXPN, and now more than ever, your online freedom and privacy are under threat. Governments and ISPs want to control what you can or cannot see while keeping a detailed record of everything you do, plus that free Wi-Fi at the coffee house or airport terminal is putting you at risk because of passwords and sensitive data you, that can be intercepted much more easily than you might have believed. And more specifically towards you Canadians watching me, because I am in fact Canadian myself, there is the possibility that your ISP will have to record for the next six months a bunch of information, will have to give up your IP and information to allow for people to actually sue your pants off for all of this so-called legal torrenting downloading we've been getting away with for years, which I haven't done, but a lot of people have taken for granted since most ISPs don't even give away your information or don't even give the warning to you. And that is about to change. Using a service like this, which operates outside of Canada, is going to be hugely beneficial since any VPN service within the borders of Canada will also have to do the same thing as the ISPs. So ProXPN is a global, not in Canada, VPN that works with almost any internet connection, creates a secure encrypted tunnel through which all of your online data passes back and forth. Any online application can work with ProXPN, including your web browser, email, file sharing, and instant messaging programs. ProXPN keeps everything you do online hidden from prying eyes, disguising your physical location, and giving you unfeathered access to any website or online service, no matter where you live or travel to. Complete online privacy with 2048-bit encryption key and 512-bit encryption tunnel. Works with OpenVPN and PPTP. That way you don't have to set it up yourself. You get to choose. Protects yourself against your ISP six strikes rule or the warning law in Canada. Also the fact that there will be recording all of your traffic, so we might as well have encrypted traffic. Bypass internet filtering, blocked websites, geographical restrictions for internet content and online video with worldwide servers available in the US, UK, Asia, and more, and ProXPN's software for Windows and Mac offers advanced controls allowing you to select the programs reports you want to anonymously route through ProXPN servers. Huge benefit because if ever the tunnel drops, your torrenting program can be turned off so you don't get caught or recorded. ProXPN also works with iOS or Android devices allowing you to use your data plan or public corporate Wi-Fi with complete and total privacy on the go, which is what I do, by the way, and no app required, even though they have free apps available for iOS and Android and some other ones I haven't actually checked yet. 24 seven customer support, and all you need to do is to go to proxpn.com slash podcast for more information and to sign up, and you, the TQA Weekly watchers and listeners, also get a free 30-day risk-free trial. Remember to visit proxpn.com slash podcast and sign up with the coupon code TQAWEE. ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for the entire year. You only have to use the coupon code TQA Weekly to benefit from a 20% off lifetime discount from your account just because you're watching this show. Don't forget to subscribe to this show if you haven't already done so. Share with those that you think can benefit from this and like it that way or dislike it so that I know exactly what you think about this show. Have a great day and goodbye.